Hi! First one in a couple weeks. I know. Sad boy Lewis. It's a sad, depressing week as he, a Browns fan. He tore it, coach. It's gone. It's it's tore the shoulder. Over. Broke a bone. It's over. Uh, as you guys probably already know, Deshaun Watson's out for the season. Um, yeah, that was a fun six games this season from him. Uh, six. Ups, ups and downs, right? Six? Four. Four or five. 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 All right. Um, I don't know. Look <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he looked good in, in some cases, looked bad in others, and... You know, it's going to be two years going on to the third year of this contract, and I still don't know who Deshaun Watson is as a Brown. Um, it's unfortunate he finally found his old self. And he found then, some groove, and now he's out for another. But total props for playing through a broken bone in your throwing arm and yeah, uh, on a high ankle sprain and leading your team for, you know, for... Big time comeback against True. a big time rival. Yeah, but now, now, it's... now we won't see him until August sl- okay. or slash September. We'll see what happens. Uh, it's asshole week. Yeah, it's Steelers week. Hate week. Yeah. Well, the Steelers still suck, and the Browns are in a situation to suck more. Well, but both teams are six and three. <laughs> And uh, DTR is our starting quarterback at the moment. Again. So we'll, we'll see how this works out. I will say I, I I do have faith in him still. I think the last time on an hour's notice. Ah, he had more time than that. Two hour notice. Two hour notice. I think the big thing here, and everyone says like, oh, yeah, but he should be able to, you know, he should have that mindset of he's the guy and he's got to step up and play. Well, I get that, and I, I do agree with that to a point, but also getting first-team reps, I think, is is huge. So um, we'll see what DTR does with a full week of Let it practice. ride. This. You spend a draft pick on him to be your backup quarterback of the future, yeah, might as well give him a chance. Yeah, um, I like this move over starting P.J. Walker because here's the thing. We know P.J. ceiling, and we know his floor. We don't know either of DTR. We saw, I think, what is the absolute worst he could ever get against the Ravens. But where his ceiling's at, I don't know. Well, I think I think this should be a game where the Browns should at least think, like, have an idea what direction they want to go into next week. Um, you, you give DTR the start. There's yep. nothing wrong with that. Um, P.J. Walker had five turnovers. Um, that's big it's cost you a game um five picks right that's not including his his fumbles well yeah it's still bad no matter what it's bad um five interceptions in three games is pretty bad one touchdown to one touchdown um not good it's just you i like the veteran presence of having a pj walker yeah but you let it ride with a rookie quarterback for this reason. It's just you, you don't know what you could get out of him. If yeah. you can get that, I'd like like to say like a Minshew magic out of it. Or, yeah. you know, just bottom line, just give you – because a rookie quarterback is going to give you everything they have because they're young. They don't know re- really better. But at least they're going to give you all they have. Um, and – you know, it's just kind of at the point. Why not? Yeah. Are we just gonna let the ship sink? Yeah. Or we're we just gonna say, "Fuck it." Yeah. It, like, like because, say he does go yeah. out and play plays bad, you have the option of getting a veteran quarterback Which, that could, yeah, take you the rest of the way. Like a Joe Flacco that was just worked out by the Browns. Yes, today. he was. Yeah, in, in the building had a workout. Uh, from what I've been seeing is that he, he left, went back home. Without a contract today. Today, which is interesting, it, knowing that, I'm going to bring it up, is Joe Burrow is now out for the season. So now, obviously trade deadline is quite past. So what do you do? You're stuck with Matt Ryan, <laughs> Joe Flacco, Nick Foles, or... Cam Newton and RG3, I guess, is, like, throwing his hat in there. Um, 
I would sign Joe Flacco immediately, in my opinion. Yes, well... I think he still has it, and I don't like, you know, having the idea that we're basically as... The savior, if DTR isn't well, thinking Joe Flacco is going to come in and save the season. I don't like that thought, but Joe Flacco, I'd rather take Joe Flacco over P.J. Walker at this moment, knowing that Flacco still has a deep ball. We saw it last year in that comeback against us against the, when the, we played the Jets, and he won't turn it over a ton. So, Well, here, here's the thing about Joe <laughs> Flacco. Well, if you sign Joe Flacco, one, obviously... They didn't need to sign him today because yep. he's not in the game plan for Sunday. True. Uh, so they're not in a rush. Yeah. But it is expected for them to bring a third quarterback onto the roster yep. by next week. Sure. Whether it be Matt, or, uh, I mean Joe Flacco or someone else. Um, but that's the deal. Yeah. Joe Flacco, you're getting an experienced quarterback that's won a Super Bowl, that's played in the AFC North, and knows what it takes. Yeah. Um, but. He's just he, so much, he's, in my opinion, so much better than what else is on the market. It's just, he's he knows what to do. He's been put in a situation where he has a good defense, and all he has to do is make simple throws. You're not asking much out of him, yeah. and that works out. But If that happens. I, I think it would be a smart move between him, Cam Newton, maybe even Matt Ryan. Yeah. But those are a lot of what-ifs. But the what-if and the hope is that DTR goes out and balls out and has – that's our guy for the, the remainder of the season, and we don't even have to think about it. I think that's that, what my ideal scenario is this, this year. This is a good segment to start. Yeah. To segue to get into yes. our next segment. Because we can keep going on. Our world don't have keys of the game. Yeah. And it's DTR. DTR. Take care of the football. Yes, please do. The Steelers win games by getting turnovers. And if you don't turn the ball over, they don't play very well. Yeah. Um, so you have two great bookend pass rushers against two banged up tackles where you have Christian making a second start as a Cleveland Brown yep. at left tackle and then Dewan Jones he is out he hasn't been ruled out yet he is questionable and he said he hasn't practiced all week but he has said that he plans on playing on Sunday but toss up it, it's one of those toss ups again um yeah he, he's still questionable, so it's still on the table. Um, what you want to do is take care of the football here. Yeah. As long as, and also add on to keep it simple. Don't force the ball in a double coverage. Don't be running around like the ball, ball's a loaf of bread. It's You got to hold that thing like it's a baby. Hold yeah. it nice and tight. Yeah. Don't, Don't let drop. strip the ball from Don't you. drop it. Um, <laughs> and I think the second key to this game is win the game in the trenches. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite things to say is the game starts on the offense and defensive line. It Take does. the game to the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're at home. You're pissed off. Everybody's counting you out. Yeah. Go out there and kick some ass. The Steelers may have a great defense, but you know what their weakness is? Their entire the, offense. The run, the run game and their offense. Speaking of their offense, Jalen Warren is now the starting running back. Ooh. Yeah, they announced the starting running back. So well, Najee is now like kind of the third down guy, uh, which I, as someone that's been watching it for a long time, in the, my opinion, that's a very good move because Najee's been playing yeah, fairly bad. Yeah, that's that was kind of expected. Yeah, I mean, Warren's been giving them the, the, the boost that they needed. And uh, I was going to throw out the last Royal Donut for this game is take the lead and don't let them come back. They don't play very well from behind. They because they can't play from behind. If you're up a score to have two scores, there's no way this team's coming back on you. And and the thing is with that is that every single week in and week out, we see the Steelers come for one drive and one drive only and take the lead. They play one drive a game and they win. Don't let them do that because sorry, their offense plays one drive a game. It's it's absurd but, and and they they keep doing it. And they, they, they keep doing it, and I keep watching this team through almost an entire game, you know. Like just 50, awful. 55 minutes of the of the offense just being horrible. And then, and then I don't know, Kenny Pickett just turns into Patrick Mahomes and just drives down the field and gets a touchdown uh, to either take the lead or tie it. And I do not want to see that this week. 
Uh, we did see it in the first matchup, basically, where it was neck and neck, and we lost by four points. Well, the the thing about Steelers is the Steelers' offense is they didn't even show up in that game. I know. The, it's all, <laughs> they didn't even have that drive. They, they had two, they had 14 points by the defense. Yeah. like, And that's what won them the game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you had... You had one touchdown by George Pickens, which was a slip up in coverage. Yeah. Kudos to you for making a good play. Um, but yeah, man coverage with Deontay Johnson's kind of scares me. It's what it's like big plays. They're like they're an anomaly, and it's weird the success of your offense because anybody, any team at any time can have a big play, but it doesn't mean your offense is. Doing good, moving the ball. Yeah, you can have one good play a game, and that'd be it. Yeah, I mean, they, go watch college football. It happens every Saturday. I think there's that, one that big is game, college football, and then <laughs> no, that's their lot one touchdown, but they lose seventy to seven. Like, yeah, okay, kudos to you. Um, but the Browns' defense, I think, is the major key to this game. Yeah, also um, Browns' defense, Juan Thornhill is ruled out. Yeah. So we got Rodney McLeod starting at safety, which I do not mind. Veteran safety that can get the job done. He's been playing well. Yeah, it's not something I'm like, oh, shit, burn the burn down. It's yeah, having him, honestly, is great. Veteran leadership. Yeah. Um, they're they're going to play well. And I think for the defense, you got to really bang up the run game against the Steelers. Um, they're starting to gain some momentum on the ground. Yeah. Um, now that... Uh, Matt Canada has came down from the booth. Offense has been running a lot more smoothly, and they've been running the ball a lot better. But as far as passing game, it's still kind of mid. Um, yeah. So don't let the Steelers' offense beat you this week. But like you said, big big plays that do tend to happen with this team, and the run game starting to finally look good. We need to shut it down. Yeah. We need to shut both of those down. And really, and in my opinion, really just have Kenny Pickett put the game on his shoulders and just continue to... Lock down Jalen Warren. Yeah. Yeah, because you know Najee ain't going to be doing much. No. Um, I say that now, and then who the fuck knows what's going to happen. But, uh, yeah, so that's definitely a big thing. So, cowtails, who you toss them out to? Well, I think the obvious one's Miles Garrett. Obviously. Um, this is a showdown of who's the best uh, pass rusher in the game right now. Um you know, it's a very tight race. Miles is at 11 and a half. TJ is at 10 and a half. Um, so, the Browns need someone to step up. And who else besides the best player on your team? Miles Garrett. Um, the Steelers team has been asking for it. Um, a lot of hurt feelings from the last game. A very game true. that the Browns know they should have won. Do it for Chubb. Um, you do it for Chubby Chubb. You do it for Deshaun. You do it for whoever's out there. You go out there and beat the shit out of Steelers because at know, home, yeah, yeah, you give the fans what they want. Yeah, I swear, I swear to you, at this point in the season, where we've hit, it can't get really much worse than this. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm sure it can, but <laughs> it always gets worse. If, if we win this game, and that's it for the rest of the year, to tell you the truth, I'll fucking take it. Dude, I'll take a win over the Steelers, go to seven and three, and have to play Jake Browning at, at the end of the season against the. Go, you you take care of these bastards, and you like, all right, this is our last big shot at the playoffs. At least kick their fucking ass. Yeah, I I, I would love to see a forty-one to three game because you owe yeah. these guys one. You yeah. owe them one. They're they're a bunch of bastards, just like the Ravens. Just like the Bengals, you owe them an ass kicking at home. You yeah. really do. They deserve it. Yeah, you, you know <laughs> that we've blown games in Pittsburgh, but you know what? When they come here, you do not let them have anything. Hell yeah, kick their fucking ass. Yeah. Well, I'm tossing the sucks one out here to Kevin Stefanski, dude. Just please call a game like you've been calling the last three to four weeks. Continue doing that. Tailor it around DTR. You know. We need to have something that just fits him. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. Play action sounds pretty good to me. Uh, a lot of draws and a lot of the screens. Screen game's been working incredible. I think we should do a ton more of that, especially with DTR. Get him comfortable. So this really falls on a Kevin 
at, at least just have him getting warmed up and, and in the groove. Uh, that's Kevin's job. That's your job, man. Um, let's see it. Don't fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then I think the final cowtel goes to the replacement himself, Jerome Ford. Um, had to really come on in the second half of that first Brown Steelers game after Chubb went down. Had a great game. Um, he had another great game. Probably his best game as a Brown against the Ravens past, this yeah. past week. We had a good game against the Steelers too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 107 yards. You know, great this is uh, this is a running back that, I mean, a team that relies a lot on the run, even when they had Deshaun. The run game was a huge part of this offense, sure. and there's they're going to lean on it again, especially if gets a run defense of the Steelers that's been, you know, beaten up. Um, they're a lot better this time around because now they got Cam Hayward back, but it's still somewhere that's a red flag for their defense. Yeah, is Minka back? Minka is ruled out. Okay. Um, I know he's been out for the past couple weeks. Yes. That's huge. Yeah. That is huge. Yes, it, it is, but... You still have the great pass rushers yeah. and White and, and, and Highsmith. And against a, a beat-up offensive line, and which is rough. Also to add that both of the Steelers' linebackers started this season are both out for the season, and Cole Holcomb and Quan Alexander. Um, so that's definitely a different-look Steelers yeah. team. Um you know, Cole Holcomb went down against Tennessee a couple weeks ago. And Quan yeah, Alexander went down. Yeah, yeah, this past week against the Packers. Yeah, that's huge. Especially um, him. So, you know, I'm I'm really looking for the Browns to, like, you know, hush the haters right now. Yeah. Um, I don't think this season's over with. There's been teams that have gone a lot further with a lot less. I mean... That Philadelphia team, not saying that we are that team, but they took Nick Foles after Carson Wentz, an MVP candidate at the time, yeah. and he won the MVP that year, went and won a Super Bowl. With I mean, it was a great defense, but, yeah. but the, Brown, the Browns' defense is great. The, the defense was great, and on that team, the offense was good, but once Carson went down... They ran it simple, ran the ball, had had a little trickery. Obviously, win the Super Bowl with some some, some trickery, yeah. but like that's what you need. The guy like DTR, you need to have a just simple, simple offense. I'd like to see move the ball. I'd like to see DTR run the ball a lot too. I agree. Yeah, yeah. But like let like let it ride. Yeah. Like, if you run a fucking trick play, be smart about it. Yeah. You know, but keep it simple. Yeah, and something we talked about a couple weeks ago with, with P.J. Walker, those design keepers were, really worked for P.J. I would see the same thing with DTR work not very good. Now, the thing with DTR, you need a slide. Please slide. Do not take the big hitch because you are not the biggest quarterback in the world. You are a little tiny, to be honest. A little tiny. He is. He doesn't have a lot of muscle on him. Oh, uh, so, yeah, that's definitely going to be huge. Uh, so, what's games you looking forward to this week? Oh, well, oh, well, I don't think you forgot the most important part. Yeah, the sponsored. The sponsor, Mike Lewis Real Estate Game of the Week. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with a AFC game, a divisional game, but not the AFC North. Uh, I'm going to go with the New York Jets at the Buffalo Bills. Believe it or not, both teams are kind of sitting at the same record. Um, you got crazy. the Bills at five and five, and you got the Jets at four and five. Yeah, two teams still fighting and clawing to get into the wild card, packed in by the AFC North right now. And now it's wide open, buddy. Yeah, you, you just went had two starting quarterbacks go down in the same week. Yeah. Um, two teams fighting for the wild card. You got two of them playing this week. Yeah, and Cincinnati at five and five with no really hope with a uh, Browning. I mean, it's, it, it so is they, a toss that, up. that really opened up the floodgates. So, and with Buffalo going down on Monday night against Denver, who have put together a four game win streak, 
and they're clawing their way in to the wild card Raiders. with Russ looking like yeah. Russ again. Yeah, and the Raiders doing the same thing. With, after firing Josh McDaniels. Two in a row. It is starting to get interesting, yeah. and the Browns are going to have to start putting wins together. So that's why this win, going 7-3, and three, looks a lot better than 6-4. and four. Well, here's a stat. If the Browns win this week, their probability of getting into the playoffs goes up to 83%. I like that. If they lose, they will move down to 50%. Sheesh. It's not a big hurt, but it turns into 50-50. <laughs> but yeah. if you win, 83% is nice and sexy. I like that. I like that. And then really you need, I mean, you can, I don't want to say lose a lot of games after that, but like, continue this is, winning, but it makes it a little bit easier. I think because I think the division gets really interesting soon, especially if you win this game. Very spicy. Baltimore. So you're only down a game to Baltimore. Yeah, which Bal- you, you split with. Baltimore has a very very tough schedule coming up. Yes, they still got they got Jacksonville, they got Kansas City. Oh no, I think they do. They have Kansas City. And then they they have uh, the 49ers still. Mm-hmm. Um. They have another big one in there. Yeah, they is it Miami? And they play Pittsburgh and they they play Miami. Yeah. That's the team that they play. Yeah, so they got they got a rough go of it in this last little bit, so should be interesting. Yeah, uh, cha ching. Yeah, but speaking of, speaking of the Chiefs, uh we have a Super Bowl rematch for this week with Philadelphia Eagles versus Kansas City Chiefs playing. Very excited for this game. And it's kind of who, because they're, they're both obviously very hot teams. So it's kind of like, I don't know. Well, let's see if they can redeem themselves or if they can hold on. And uh, I don't know. I, I just always love when this ha- like happens, you know, is having the, the, the Super Bowl rematch go during the regular season. Uh, it, it's always super fun. And I think both teams are great. I, I don't, I don't, oh man, I'm going to go Philadelphia on this one though. I don't know. Something, something I feel it. Fly, Eagles, fly. It would be awesome. I'd love it. Come on. Um, but predictions. How do you feel about this? Predictions. Game? Predictions. Um, I feel like this game could really go either way. And it really just rides on DTR. Um, yeah. I know the defense is going to do its thing. Um, this is not an electrifying offense like we played against the Ravens when DTR first started. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of punting in this game, a lot of field goals, but there's going to be a lot of field goals, a lot of punting. Um, so I think this game is going to be a very low scoring game. True. Kind of that 13 to 10, maybe 16, 13, mm-hmm. uh, Maybe an awkward throwing a safety in there somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that will fit into this game. Yeah. Well, one huge thing in my... But I will go Browns. I'm sorry. There we go. So it's like get around the range. Oh, 16, 13 Browns. Okay. There you go. I like that. Uh, I, I do think field position battle is going to be so key. Because in the when in the Ravens game, we couldn't even get past our, like, 30. <laughs> so we, we need to win the field position battle. And I think that's going to be really big if both offenses just struggle. If we can get just to I don't know, the 40 or 50 and just keep it, like they start on like the 10, it, that's going to be huge. So I think that's going to be a massive thing. But I huge. but I kind of agree. It is going to be kind of a low-scoring game, but it, it's on DTR. And, you know, I, and I hope Kevin keeps it simple enough for him and, and he really finds his groove and starts playing pretty well. Because, you know, when you go against – you know, the Ravens are kind of drop a dud. You, he's kind of looking for some redemption here, you know? And I really hope he gets it because being 0-2 and, and playing bad, your only two games you've played, um, isn't a good look. And it, it definitely hurt his, uh, you know, psyche. So, But I'm going to go Browns. I'm going Browns 20 to 14. Browns. Oh. Yeah. Um, two offensive touchdowns? Two offensive touchdowns. Oh, jeez. I know, but guys, thanks for watching. Uh, go Browns. Go Seagull. It's going to be an interesting week, but I think we can pull it off. Uh, like, subscribe. See you on Monday. Go Browns.